Hi students, welcome to SPS University. Today we are going to discuss about biotechnology and its applications. So in biotechnology principles and process, we discussed about our DNA technology. So when it comes to biotechnology, so the biotechnology it deals with large scale production that is industrial scale production of biopharmaceuticals by using genetically modified microbes, fungi, plants and animals. Like not only biopharmaceuticals, like many products are from biotechnology. There may be in treatment of diseases, therapeutics, diagnostics, genetically modified crops in agriculture, processed food, bioremediation waste treatment, energy production. So, biotechnology is applied in all, all the fields like food industry, pharmaceuticals, agriculture industries. If you take medical biotechnology, here it is of, in diagnostics, therapeutics, vaccines. In agricultural biotechnology, plant agriculture, farming, food processing. Environmental biotechnology, cleaning through bioremediation, preventing environmental issues. Forensic biotechnology, paternity test, scientific investigations. Industrial biotechnology, energy production and for production of new materials. So like this, there is lot of applications of biotechnology in various fields like agriculture, food industry, pharmaceuticals, industrial biotechnology, environment, forensic, like there is a lot of applications. So in this application, there are three critical research areas like providing the best catalyst in the form of improved organism from a microbe or a pure enzyme. Creating optimal conditions through engineering per catalyst downstreaming process that is the processing of biotechnology products to purify the protein and organic compounds. So these are three critical research areas of biotechnology. So here when we come to applications of biotechnology in agriculture. So for what purpose we will use biotechnology in agriculture? So basically when we come to agriculture to increase the food production okay, it may be done by through agrochemical based agriculture that is by using chemical pesticides, chemical fertilizers, it is agrochemical. Organic agriculture without using any chemicals. Genetically engineered crop based agriculture that is through biotechnology. Okay. So, in Green Revolution, the food production was increased by triple three times. The food production was increased by three times in Green Revolution by using improved crop varieties that is, by hybridization better crop management practices and use of 
agro chemicals like fertilizers and pesticides. So green revolution was successful due to various aspects like improved crop varieties, better crop management practices and agriculture agrochemicals like fertilizers and pesticides. But there are some limitations of green revolution also. Okay. Like existing production was not enough for growing population. Okay. And next, agrochemicals are too expensive for farmers and harmful to nature. Agrochemicals means whatever the pesticides, chemical pesticides and fertilizers are used in agriculture, they are too expensive for farmers and harmful to nature. That means they cause pollution. The next thing is, further increase in the yield with the existing varieties is not possible by conventional breeding, that is by hybridization. So these are a few limitations of green revolution. So due to green revolution, it has led to pollution and it is not possible to increase yield with the existing varieties. So here we should go for genetically modified crops for a possible solution. What is this genetically modified crops? So genetically modified crops means they have desirable genes from other species. Desirable genes means what? Desirable genes means it may be of insect or pest resistant, giving better yield. Or it may be resistant to drought, resistant to snow. Like this there are different genes which are called desirable genes so which are important features for agriculture so that desirable genes are incorporated into the crops so that they become drought resistant or they give better yield okay. so here when we come to genetically modified crops okay they have more tolerance to abiotic stresses like cold, drought, salinity, heat. They are insect and pest resistant and herbicide resistant. Okay. Reduce post harvest losses, that means after harvesting again there will be losses during storage. Like for example if you take flavor saver tomato. So which get decomposed easily. So it will be tomato will get decomposed. But this flavor saver tomato can be preserved for a long time without decomposition. Efficient mineral usage by plants and enhanced nutrition value. That is the agricultural products with enhanced nutrition, like we are getting golden rice, which is rich in vitamin E. Okay. Create a desirable plants producing starch, fuels, parasiticals and industries. That is from plants we can produce fuels. That is biodiesel. Okay. Pharmaceuticals. That is medicines can be extracted. Which is very important for uh, the medicinal field. Like this, genetically modified crops have more benefits like more tolerance, insect and pest resistant, efficient mineral uses, efficient enhanced nutrition value of uh, products, desirable plants for starch, fuel, pharmaceuticals. Okay. So first we will discuss about pest resistant plants. What is this pest resistant? That is pest is a micro, these are microorganisms which will cause diseases in plants. Due to this, the plant production yield will be decreased. So how to form pest resistant plants? Okay. 
So to form that is to create a pest resistant plant in this transferring of a toxin produced from a gene from bacteria to plants will reduce the dependency on insects. That means to prevent the dependence on insects we need to transfer the toxin produced from the gene in bacteria to plants. That means the gene should be transferred from bacteria to plants. Like if you take Bt cotton, Bt corn, rice, Bt rice, Bt tomato, like this there are many varieties. What is this Bt? Bt means it is name of an bacteria, Bacillus thuringiensis. It is name of a bacteria. What this bacteria will do? It will produce a protein to kill certain insects. Okay. They will not kill all the insects which are formed. They will only kill the specific one like Leptopteros, that is army worm. Siloterons like beetles, dipterons like flies and mosquitoes. So whatever the protein that is produced by this that is toxic, which will kill the insects, which will cause harmful to plants. So here this bacillus thuringiensis will produce a toxic protein. And this toxic protein is, when it is produced in bacillus thuringiensis, it is in active in form. That is called protoxin. Protoxin means it is inactive form of toxin and it is produced in bacteria. Okay, that's the reason why this toxic substance will not kill bacillus thuringiensis. So why bacillus thuringiensis will not die even though it produces a toxic protein? The reason is, it is produced in the form of inactive protoxin. Okay. How it will get activated? When this inactivated toxin is taken by that is the insects, due to alkaline pH in the gut, that is the digestive system, Due to alkaline pH, what happens is it will get activated with soluble crystals. So that means whatever the inactive toxin secreted by bacillus thuringiensis, when it is taken by insects, they get activated and they will solubilize the crystals. So when this it is activated, that is the activated toxic protein binds to surface of midget, that is epithelial cells. When it binds epithelial cells, it will produce pores that will cause lysis. Lysis means breakdown. Lysis means breakdown, swelling and eventually death of insects. So this toxin will kill the insect. As it kills the insect, that is, it is used in this preparation by Bt cotton. And this toxic is encoded by a gene called CRY. The name of the gene is C or Y in bacteria. And these cry genes are produced, introduced into cotton plant through recombinant DNA technology, that is through our DNA technology. These genes are introduced into cotton plant. So that's why it is called Bt cotton. So Bt cotton means it has the genes of that is bacillus thuringiensis, which will kill that is the insects. Okay. So due to this, there is no dependence on like this. That is, there is no dependence of this is on insecticides. So now the plant is resistant to insect resistant variety of food. Like this, there is Bt brinjol, Bt brindi, Bindi. Like this, there are a lot of varieties. 
not only BT cotton, BT potato, BT brinjal, BT bindi, this all are there. So, BT means it is a bacterium that is Bacillus thuringiensis from which the gene is transferred to the specific plant. Okay. And the genes which code for this like cry A1AC and cry 2 ab which will control cotton bollworms. Cry A1 AB will control corn borer. So here you can see this is cotton bollworm. This is affected cotton, the seed that is this seed, and this is unaffected one. So here you can see corn borer, which will make holes in the corns, which will bore. So these are encoded by genes that is corn that is cry A1 AB. Cotton bollworm, it is uh, encoded by cry a1 ac cry a2 ab like this there are different genes not only the this cry cry only like cry a1 ac cry a2 ab cry a1 ab which will code for that is to control different insects due to this what happens is there is no need to depend on insecticides so insecticides not needed so that they don't spend a lot of money on this and there is no pollution. Okay. This is pest resistant plant BT cotton. So here you can see that is how it is. The BT gene is transferred into bacillus that is it is transferred into bacillus corn. Whenever the European corn bearer feeds on corn plant and digests protein and put it with the Bt gene. Okay. So due to this Bt gene will produce Bt a toxic protein which will get activated in the alkaline pH. Okay. Which will lead to the collapsing of the gut and insect will die. So here you can see Bt is in active form when it is sprayed on crops. It is eaten by insect. Toxins get activated by alcohol pH. Swelling of gut of insects and death of insects. Okay. So here till now what we discuss is about the Bt cotton. That is the Bt cotton is the Bacillus thuringiensis, which is a Bt cotton. Okay. Which is a pest resistant plant okay. and next when you come to that is another method that is another thing in agriculture is RNA interference what is this RNA interference in short it is called RNA I okay. what is the use of this method so this RNA interference method is used to develop resistance against nematode pests. Okay. And it is naturally in eukaryotes, it is naturally present in eukaryotes as a cellular defense. That is as a to defense mechanism it is naturally present in eukaryotes. So what is this method? So in this method, RNA interference method is adapted to prevent the infestation of tobacco roots by a nematode. The name of nematode is Melodogyne incognito. It will affect the roots of plants. When it affects the roots of plants, what happens is the yield of tobacco will decrease. When the yield of tobacco plant decreases, obviously, there will be a loss to farmers. So how to control this? How to make resistant to nematodes? So by using RNA interference. RNA means RNA interference. In this, the basic principle is generally RNA is single stranded. It is single stranded. So this single standard is made double standard, a complementary double standard binds to mRNA. 
when it becomes double stranded what happens is the process of translation is stopped that means translation will take place only when it is single stranded but when it is double stranded translation will not take place that means it is silencing the mrna so how it will be into double stranded or that means how they will insert the complementary or knee it may be from infection by rna viruses or through transposal transposals are mobile genetic elements either through rna viruses or through mobile genetic elements the complementary rna will be injected into that is the root of the plant so that the RNA becomes double stranded and further process will not take place that is when mrna becomes silenced the translation process this all will get stopped so that when translation is stopped there is no secretion of toxic protein so it cannot produce any toxic protein this is rna interference so here you can see the infection will start at seedling stage due to this what happens is the stunted the small height of the stem is reduced reduction in leaf size yellowing of leaf formation of gallstone symptoms and you can see galls in the roots these are galls which we are seeing in the roots okay obviously what happens is the rate of photosynthesis also decreases okay so here you can see these are infected roots and these are transgenic roots so transgenic roots means they are having complementary rna and by using this complementary rna the rna becomes double stranded so the rna becomes a double stranded so that when it becomes double stranded it cannot that is meridogyny nematode and meridogyny in cognita cannot attack the tobacco plant that means the tobacco plant is now safe with this transgenic plant that is the gene which is the complementary rna okay. so what are the steps of rna interference in this step first that is using agrobacterium as a vector so it is a bacteria which is used as a vector through this nematode specific genes were introduced into host plant here host plant means tobacco okay. that is it is introduced into tobacco okay. so the introduced gene will produce that will produce both sense and anti sense rna actually rna is single stranded but here it will be double stranded rna as both sense and anti sense rna both are complementary to each other when they are complementary they will form double stranded rna ds rna will double stranded leading to rna when they become double stranded they will not go for that is secretion of protein So during RNA, the cellular enzyme dicer binds to double cell RNA and cleaves to short pieces of nucleotide pairs, known as small interfering RNAs. So this is the procedure of RNA interference. So in RNA interference, first with the help of agrobacterium, the genes are inserted into host. Host means tobacco. so when the genes are inserted it will produce sense and anti sense they will as they are complemented to each other it will form double stranded rna and this double stranded rna it is used that is it will uh, produce rna interference it will not go for further process that is translation will not take place okay so the rna pairs to the cellular enzyme and called rna induced silencing complex Okay, so the nucleus activity of RNA induced silencing complex then degrades the mRNA, thus silencing the expression of mRNA. That means 
mRNA is silenced so that it will not go further that is the activity okay so specific mRNA of nematode is silenced and parasite cannot survive in the transgenic host okay so here whatever we are taking the transgenic host that is the trans host in this there are specific mRNA genes of specific mRNA of nematode okay so this is how RNA interference will play an important role in producing that is a nematode resistant producing a nematode resistant tobacco plants which are resistant to melodogenic incognita melodogenic germic so follow us on SPSMSC on social media Till now we have discussed about the applications of biotechnology in agriculture that is one is Bt cotton another one is RNA interference which is a defense mechanism in eukaryotes which will affect which is used to control that is make nematode resistant. So next we are going to discuss about applications of biotechnology in medicine. There are a lot of applications like recombinant therapeutics. Okay. And recombinant DNA technology or DNA technology helps in understanding structure, function, regulations of genes and their products. And with the help of recombinant DNA technology, large scale production of therapeutic drugs can be done. So large scale of therapeutics. They are safe. And they don't cause unwanted immunological response. Unwanted immunological response means they don't cause any allergies. Okay. So in the endogenously, that means through inside the genetic defects can be corrected. So in applications of biotechnology, not only in the production of medicines as well as the, not only in the production of drugs, it is used to correct genetic defects also. Okay, so first we will discuss about genetically engineered insulin. What is this insulin? So insulin is produced from pancreas which will reduce blood glucose level. If it is not properly secreted, what happens is it leads to increase in blood sugar level which is called diabetes. So which is called diabetes. So here Insulin used for diabetes were initially, that is before it was extracted, before this, that is it was extracted, before, okay. It was extracted initially from slaughtered cattle and pig. It was extracted from slaughtered cattle and pig, okay. That means the firm cattle and pig they have extracted this insulin and used to give for patients. But in some patients they used to develop an allergy that is an immunological response. That is a allergy response which has reaction to foreign protein. So here the insulin which is extracted from the slaughtered cats, the pigs that is which is extracted in some patients it used to cause allergy. So when it causes allergy it is a complication. So by using genetic engineering human insulin was cloned and produced in large quantities by using a bacteria that is called Escherichia coli. How it is produced? How insulin is produced that is by using genetic engineering. So for going into, before going into production of insulin, you should understand the structure of insulin. Okay. When you take the structure of insulin, okay. Immature insulin, immature means the insulin which is not functional, non-functional insulin. When it is produced from, that is pancreas, it is immature, non-functional. It has three polypeptide chains, polypeptide A, polypeptide B, polypeptide C. And during maturation, that is in the process of maturation, what happens is, 
the C peptide is lost. That is, the insulin which is synthesized initially, it is a pro-hormone. Pro-hormone means which is inactive. To convert into hormone that is the active form that is hormone, the C chain is removed. That means a mature insulin that is C chain is removed from maturation. That means a mature insulin will have only A and B polypeptides. Okay. So there is a difference between a immature insulin and mature insulin. That is pro-hormone insulin and hormone insulin. Pro-hormone is inactive. It is non-functional. It has A, B, C and polypeptide chains. But whereas when you come to active insulin, mature insulin, it has only A and B. That means during maturation, C peptide is removed. Okay. And between this, there is a bond that is disulfide bonds which are present between these chains. Okay. So here, when you come to this insulin, between this A and B, C polypeptide chains, there are disulfide bonds. So how this insulin is produced? For production of this insulin, an American company called Eli Lilly has prepared two DNA sequences of chain A and B and introduced them into plasmid of equally to produce insulin chains. Insulin chains means A and B. And later on they are combined by disulfide forms, they formed human insulin. So here you can see the process. Bacteria Essertia coli is taken as a vector. Okay. So here you can see the plasmid is extracted from bacteria and it cut with the restriction endonucleases. In this cut, they have introduced the insulin gene. This is insulin gene which is introduced into this. After introducing the insulin gene, it is again introduced into the bacterium. Now it is recombinant bacteria. So when it is kept in fermentation tank, that is bacteria by multiplying produces human insulin. Okay, so this extraction purification for human insulin that is which we call human insulin. So this is how insulin is produced in biotechnology by using that is Essertia coli by Eli Lilly company. So initially they have taken human insulin gene from a healthy human cell and it is introduced into plasmid of by that is which will form recombinant DNA and is introduced into bacterium and it is kept in bioreactors so that the product is in the extractor. Okay. Now insulin can be produced in large scale when compared with slaughtered animals, cats and pigs, it is produced in large scale by using biotechnology. Okay. And it doesn't have any immunological response like allergy, like slaughtered animals insulin has caused allergy in some patients, but here there is no such symptoms. Okay. The human insulin gene which is produced that is called humulin. So here you can see that is, here this is a bacteria plasmid. Okay. So from here bacteria plasmid that is Insert genes for each of two insulin genes next to express genes in beta galactosidase. Here it is inserted. After inserting, it becomes recombinant DNA or DNA. And this or DNA is introduced into that is E. coli, the cell of E. coli again. So when it is kept in the bioreactors, that is the fermentation tanks, it will produce A and B polypeptides. And these A and B polypeptides are combined by uh, disulfide bonds by which it becomes functional insulin. Okay. So here A insulin gene that is A peptide insulin gene are kept in one bacteria, B peptide gene insulin are kept in one bacteria where they are produced separately and later on joined by that is disulfide bonds. So this is how Insulin is made by a Lilly company. So follow SPS University on SPS University on social media.
Okay. Till now, what we discussed is about the production of insulin by genetic engineering. So next application is gene therapy. So this gene therapy is used to cure genetic diseases, either which come by birth, that is genetic and genital diseases. So here what they will do? In gene therapy, they will introduce, that is, they are inserted, that is, person cells, tissues to treat the disease. Okay. So in gene therapy, what they will do is, they will extract, that is, the normal genes from a healthy cell and they are replaced with, with the deficient genes. Okay. So that what happens is it functions normally. So that what happens is it functions normally. So this is how gene therapy is done. And it was first done in that is 1990 to a four year girl which is having deficiency of Adenosine DMNAs, ADA deficiency in USC. Okay. So why this disease is caused, why ADA deficiency is caused? It is due to deletion of the gene enzyme adenosine. Enzyme adenosine DMNAs is an enzyme. What is the purpose of this enzyme? It is used for breakdown of deoxyadenose into uric acid. Okay. When it is not present, what happens is, so this deoxyadenosine is accumulated in the body and will affect immune cells and T cells. Okay. And destroying the infection likely immune cell, the cells and T cells and B cells will affect immune cells. That means finally, the immunity is reduced due to lack of this, lack of this enzyme that is adenosine DMS which will affect the immune system. Okay. So we know that adenosine DMNAs will affect our immunity. Where our immune system is affected. So due to this, due to absence of this enzyme, what happens is we lack immunity. Adenosine DMNAs, how it can be treated? By bone marrow transplantation from healthy person. Enzyme replacement therapy, injections of ADA enzyme, like lymphocytes isolated from patient uh, from patients' blood or culture into invertomine artificial. Then functional ADA is introduced into cultured lymphocytes. So these lymphocytes are again sent back to patients' body. But here. Enzyme, bone marrow transplantation, lymphocyte, these all are not immortal. They may die after some time. Okay. So here it is not a permanent, it is just a, a temporary method. Why? Because again and again there is a need to introduce that is the genetically engineered lymphocytes. Okay. So frequent, that is the infusion of this lymphocytes, bone marrow, enzymes is all required from time to time. So what is the permanent cure? The permanent cure is introduction of gene isolated from bone marrow cells into any cells at early embryonic stage. That means the treatment, permanent treatment should be done at embryonic stage only. It should be identified at embryonic stage and treatment should be done at whatever we do that is bone marrow transplantation, enzyme uh, transplant, sending of enzyme, Okay, this all lymphocytes that is artificially cultured, that is in vitro cultured lymphocytes, these all are temporary methods. But permanent method is introduction of gene into a, from bone marrow cells into ADS cells at embryonic stage. So it is a permanent method. Once it is inserted for lifelong, there is no infusion of anything. So here, gene therapy for ADA deficiency that is adenosine DMNAs deficiency, which is used for curing, that is for treatment of the ADA deficiency disorder. Okay, here we have discussed about temporary methods and one permanent method. In temporary, there are many methods, bone marrow transplantation, enzyme replacement, enzyme infusion, 
uh, in vitro cancer lymphocytes okay. this is all right. and permanent method is only introduction of gene at uh, bone marrow cells into any patient at embryonic stage so here you can see by using adenovirus uh, gene therapy is done so here you can see viral dna new gene viral dna that is modified dna is injected into vector so this is vector so vector binds to cell membrane so vector is packed enters into cell vector is packed into the vesicle so vesicle breaks and releases vector so vector projects into new genes into nucleus so cell makes the protein using new genes so this is how the here the virus vaccine virus is used as a vector so this is how that is uh, deficiency syndrome that is genetically and uh, which are by birth they are treated so here you can see cells from are removed from patient so virus is altered so that it cannot reproduce a gene that is extracted from the patient that is it is inserted into the virus so the altered virus mixes with cells from the patient that is along with it so this virus which will enter into cells of uh, that is uh, through which it will enter into cells so these altered cells are injected into patient which will produce desired hormone so this is how the genetical diseases are congenital diseases did so till now what we discuss is the method of that is according to treatment of adenosine d aminase ada deficiency it is ada deficiency and there is another application that is molecular diagnosis what is this molecular diagnosis so generally by conventional methods by blood tests serum tests and urine analysis only it is it is not possible for early detection only when we see symptoms then only we can identify the disease by conventional methods that is serum blood analysis and urine analysis but by using recombinant dna technology polymerase chain reaction pcr polymerase and ls enzyme liquid immunosorbent assay okay so by using this we can do molecular diagnosis okay in conventional methods we will identify the pathogen when suspected due to symptoms by the time you see symptoms the pathogen count is very high it is very difficult for treatment when pathogen is very high the treatment becomes very difficult and becomes complicated but when bacterial virus in our body extremely low we can identify the disease how it is possible by pcr polymerase chain reaction which will amplify amplify means it will multiply the dna so many copies of dna will come so pcr is used to detect hiv in suspected patients mutations in genes and suspected cancer patients so by pcr the gene amplification is done that is the uh, dna amplification is done for several times to millions okay so in this approach the gene is hybridized with radioactive probe and later on ordered radiography is used for de detection okay so here the regions where mutation is present the gene will not appear in the photographic film and since probe will not have any found it will be with that part so this is how by pcr that is early diagnosis of disease is done now when you come to elisa enzyme linked immunosorbent assay which is used to test that is aids so enzyme linked immunosorbent assay is one of the test for to control the disease to diagnose the aids and this is based on antigen and antibody interaction antigen means it may protein a glycoprotein in the presence of antigen antibody is produced against this it can be detected if antibodies of hiv are detected then this is gone for hiv positive if antibodies of hiv are not detected this hiv negative 
so you can see uh, elisa test a pictorial image so here you can see antibody it binds to bottom of the plus okay blocking agent is to fill the is not to bound to any antibody antigen binds to antibody here antigen has bind to antibody antibody binds to antigen enzyme reacts to the form a local that means the color of the what we call blocking agent is filled okay if this is positive that is hiv positive what about hiv negative so here you can see antigen is added blocking agent is added okay no binding of first if antigen is not present so antibody has no antigen to bind it and wash it okay here there is no binding of antigen with antibody ultimately it is negative that is hiv positive and hiv negative okay so till now what we discuss is about the molecular diagnosis which can be done at early stage not like conventional methods by seeing symptoms at all follow sps for see on social media so now come to transgenic animals what are these transgenic animals transgenic animals means where the dna is manipulated which has an extra gene that is called transgenic like transgenic mice transgenic hen that is a frog transgenic fish like this Okay. What is the reason for producing transgenic animals? There are a lot of uses of this. Like study of normal physiology. Okay, transgenic animals have services models to study. Like different aspects, like how genes are regulated, how gene affects the functioning of the body, how it affects growth and development. Okay, like insulin. like it is used to study various physiological roles in our body not only physiological roles it is used to study of diseases they act as a models to study genetic basis of diseases find possible treatments okay even transgenic models exist for various human diseases like cancer cystic fibrosis rheumatoid arthritis alzheimer's etc so they are used for study of diseases and after study the treatment also biological anti products so from transgenic animals we get lots of products like alpha 1 anti trypsin is to treat emphysema emphysema means where alveoli get damaged proteins are used to treatment for pku phenylketonuria and cystic fibrosis and The first transgenic cow which is produced is called Rosie, which is rich in alpha lactoalbumin, which is used for development that is more suitable for human babies. It is a protein enriched milk. So transgenic cow Rosie is a transgenic cow, like alpha one anti and trypsin, phenylketonuria, cystic fibrosis. That is uh, the infants require more of alpha lactoalbumin. and vaccine safety and test transgenic mice are used to test for safety of vaccines for humans like taking polio vaccine chemical safety testing transgenic animals contain genes that are sensitive to toxic substances so when there exist toxic substances we can study the effects so toxicity testing in such animals helps to obtain results in less time so that we are in safe so lot of chemicals which cause harm to humans they can be tested on transgenic animals okay so till now we discussed about why we should produce transgenic animals like study of diseases study of physiological role vaccine safety chemical safety testing vaccine safety testing is all or important roles of this transgenic animals so now come to next topic that is ethical issues what is this ethical issues so whatever we do genetically modified research it be used for public utility okay, there are some regulations in this like for any genetic modification there is a regulation 
okay and these regulations and all these are organized by genetic engineering approval company ges okay so here if you take this that is whenever we discover or invent a new thing patents will be given okay to the specific person okay all which are claimed by multinational companies but here what happens is whatever it is the nature of this like if you take variety of basmati it belongs to india but it is claimed by american company and it has taken patent and actually it is derived from indian farmers by crossing between indian basmati and semi dwarf varieties similarly neem and turmeric for this also the american has taken that is patent but it is belongs to indian mills okay and lot of disputes on patent rights so we fought again india has fought again and got the patent rights okay so ethical issues that is and next one is bio piracy so use of uh, bio resources by multinational companies of other organizations without proper authorization from countries without and without paying compensatory payment so here what happens is developed nations are economically rich but whereas the developing nations and under developed countries they are poor economically they are poor so developed nations are rich but they are poor in diversity they are poor in biodiversity so what developed countries will do is they will exploit the traditional knowledge of the poor countries which are rich in biodiversity which will commercialize and save time and effort that means developed nations will exploit the traditional knowledge and resources of poor countries which are rich in biodiversity for their commercialization and for their profits so here it comes the injustice since inadequate compensation benefit given to the poor countries so therefore steps should be taken to prevent exploitation that's why indian parliament has recently introduced that is second amendment of payment bill to deal with such type of issues so any of countries india's origin it is taken it comes under indian patent bills it cannot be taken by any other country if any other country comes it is a violation of patent country like basmati which belongs to indian farmers which is made by indian farmers but it is taken patent by america by crossing between the basmati and the semi dwarf varieties not only neem even a neem is one of the taken which is patent that's why india has introduced the second amendment of indian patent bill so that these are not stolen by developed countries and mns so this is called stealing of natural resources or traditional knowledge of other countries from the poor country the rich countries which are lack of biodiversity from rich biodiversity poor countries it is called bio piracy Okay. there are many concerned issues like not only basmati in neem like this one okay which are of indian origin so india has fought against and again called it bad that is the patent second basmati in neem karkuma like this okay. this is called uh, the bio piracy stealing of natural resources the traditional knowledge of one country by another one Okay. so this is about the bio pirates thank you all followers and sps will see on social media will meet again in the next session